people once in a great while these days, you hear about or see from a distance a man or a woman who gives you hope for the human race. Maybe we're not all selfish or hiding deep character flaws with phony PR or working the system while pretending to serve others. Maybe faith really works and maybe the Spirit of God truly lives in human hearts. Sometimes you're actually lucky enough to get to know one of those people, not just to hear about them or to see them at a distance. Garth Pleasant is one of those people. I've been blessed to get to know him, work with him, be his friend. I've been able to find in him a man in whom there is no guile, see him do things at great expense to himself for the simple reason that he thought someone else would be encouraged if it were done. I've watched him deflect compliments he believed he didn't deserve. He deflected those compliments, the praise that different ones of us have tried to give him for the simple reason that his humility won't let him believe that he's as special as those of us in the room today know he really is. Garth was a star athlete at Flint Ainsworth High School in 1967, and he was recruited to play at Michigan Christian College by Bill Shinsky. He was the team's leader, and he was chosen to the 1969 Outstanding College Athletes of America. Coach Shinsky's team had to play on a court that was five feet short of regulation size and whose cinder block walls had to be put just 36 inches from the edge of the court because back in the 1960s, unlike today, money was tight for a little Christian school in Rochester Hills. For more than three decades now, Garth Pleasant has coached a sequence of teams on that same too small court with the skills of his creativity and too large heart. Only two of his teams had losing records and 12 competed in the final four of national tournaments for small colleges. He and his team cut down the nets as national small college champions four times, 1989, 1994, 2004, 2005. Coach Pleasant was named the NLCAA Coach of the Year not once but twice, 1989, 1997, and NSCAA Coach of the Year in 2004. His career record of 720 wins is remarkable, the greatest number of wins in Michigan collegiate history. The USCAA both has honored him with its Career Achievement Award and has changed the name of the Commissioner's Award to the Garth Pleasant Athletic Director of the Year Award. In 19, yeah. In 1989, the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan named Garth Pleasant its Coach of the Year. The same year the University of Michigan blew through their March tournament to win the NCAA National Championship. Garth was inducted into that Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan Hall of Fame two years ago. And he has been paid tribute by the likes of Joe Dumars, Tom Izzo, and shortly by his good friend Don Meyer. These greats in coaching, as Meyer is, they know when they have a peer, and they know that Garth is their peer. You'd think a track record such as Garth has generated would have earned him a head coaching job at a big school, a Division I NCAA school, a salary multiple times what Rochester College could pay him. It did, several times. But every time he turned down those offers to stay with what he regarded as his kingdom ministry. Do you think he might have encouraged anyone else to enter the coaching field, thinking that maybe they could embrace that as a ministry and they could do in the lives of others what Garth had done in their lives? At least 16 of his former players have gone on to become basketball coaches themselves, including two who've won Michigan State High School titles. Both of his own sons are successful coaches. 
Clint has coached at Wayne State, Kent State, and Abilene Christian University, and he moved back here to work with his father, and in case you aren't aware, is Garth's successor as head men's basketball coach at Rochester College. Um, the tradition continues. Johnny, who rebounded the last shot of his dad's 500th win and then handed the ball over to Garth, is varsity head coach for Rochester High School. And next in line to be head coach at Rochester College when Clint has to hang up the whistle. <laughs> Kim, the daughter who had to put up with her brothers and their passion for basketball, she's also followed in her dad's footsteps. She isn't a practicing hoopster. She's a practicing counselor a practicing life investor in the spiritual well-being of people finding their way through life or navigating some of its more treacherous twists and turns. <laughs> Garth loves those three children and takes such pride in all three and the grandchildren they have presented him. Garth's all shucks attitude toward all those achievements isn't counterfeit, I can assure you. It is, again, genuine humility born of his sincere faith. He's always told me that his work at Rochester College is his way of serving God, a God who's been gracious to him. And like the God he serves, he has shown grace in recruiting players, some of whose high school coaches and teachers warned him to avoid those kids. They were losers, and they weren't going to make it. And not all those risks have had happy endings, but enough have that he is a known life changer for more young men than I can name, and some of those young men are here today to thank him, and they, knowing that today was coming, have thanked him. One came by campus the other day and stopped by my office tearfully to thank the college for honoring the man who changed his life. One of our students captured Garth's legacy well in a headline in the latest issue of our student publication, The Shield. The headline to the article about Garth, quote, it was never about the wins, championships, or halls of fame. It wasn't. In Garth's words, I try to tell my players that I'll know how good a team we were in 15 years. When, I able to, when I'm able to see how good of a husband, father, member of society they are, then I'll know how good we were. I repeatedly tell Garth that he is Rochester College's best PR agent. He knows everybody, and everybody knows him. Thousands of area kids have attended his famous Lake North Central basketball camp. I think he's the all-time favorite speaker to graduating elementary and middle school students in this region of the country. And the weddings he's performed not only for former players, but for people in this community who aren't church members, but who consider Garth their personal mentor, their personal pastor, their minister, their spiritual advisor. This man loves Christ. And he's not brassy or pushy with it. It's just who Garth is. It's always a part of his relationship with other people. And do people in these parts really respect Garth? Ask local community leaders, such as Mayor Barnett or Mike Bishop, who has attended his camps. Ask Frank Rewald or his dad, Roy Rewald. Ask Bill Fox, and Bill's had health problems lately, and Bill is here today to honor Garth. Ask Bill Potier. Bill stopped me at an event last night to tell me that he'd had to rearrange some things to get to be a part of this weekend. Ask John Coe. Ask Brad Upton. Ask Roger Knapp. Ask Bob Lytle. Oh, the list would go on and on. Well, just 
We'll just take time and move around the room and let every one of them, well, we won't. But each of you could tell your story and your reason for why you love Garth Pleasant. And by the way, speaking of people who love this man, I deliberately left Pat Pleasant unnamed until this point. This is the woman who displays a plaque in her home, quote, we interrupt this marriage for basketball season. <laughs> Pat's the beating heart of the Pleasant family's deep, deep ties to Rochester College. Her father was the college's first academic dean and second president, Dr. Lucian Palmer. His widow, Louise, lives with them. Not able to be here today, I wish she had been able to come. Perhaps she's the one who taught her daughter how to love a man whose life has been so consumed by ministry and service that he often left her to manage the majority of the, of the family crises. Garth insists that Pat is the real Hall of Famer in the Pleasant House. I would just observe that their house happens to be big enough to house two Hall of Fame personalities. Together, Pat and Garth have reared three godly children. They have nurtured a host of surrogate children. They have served faithfully at the Lake Orion Church. They have strengthened Rochester College. They've blessed all of us who've been fortunate enough to be within the orbit of their love. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to please join me in standing to honor Pat Pleasant and her husband, Garth 